Welcome to the Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show, where we make plant-based cooking easy. I'm Jill, and today we are making a delicious Christmas cake with a warm orange custard. Grab a plate, cause it's the all free Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show. Welcome back to the show, everybody. It, the holidays are almost here. So today we are making a super festive recipe for you, a Christmas cake, or as some of you know it, as a fruit cake. Uh, but this has no refined sugars, it's gluten-free, oil-free, all that good stuff, so you can eat this with no worries. All right, so one thing you're gonna have to prepare the night before uh, this is three and a half cups of dried fruit, and it's a mix of dried fruits. So I used dried cherries, cranberries, a little bit of apple, uh, currants, figs, and apricots. So, and, and some of them you have to cut up into smaller pieces like the figs and the apricots. And then I steeped uh, two cups of black tea, and then I poured it in there, and I put it in the refrigerator and let it soak overnight so that you know, those dried fruits can soften by soaking up all of that black tea. Typically some of these uh, fruit cakes like this are made with some kind of liqueur, uh, but we're not gonna do that today. We're just gonna make it so that everybody can enjoy this cake. All right, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna grind our flour. And I have uh, one and a half, or I'm sorry, two and a half cups of rolled oats. All right, two and a half cups of rolled oats that we're gonna grind into a flour. Just with our magic bullet here, or Nutribullet, you can use whatever blender you have uh, just to get an, a nice light grind. Today's show is brought to you in part by Nutrilicious. Nutritional yeast is an essential ingredient found in every modern day plant-based kitchen that actually dates back to ancient Egyptian times. Nutrilicious nutritional yeast is a powerful superfood that is gluten-free, low in sodium, non-GMO, and 100% vegan. Nutrilicious is high in dietary fiber, pound for pound has more protein than beef, and is full of the cheesy flavor we crave. As a very special deal for our viewers, click the link in the card or in the description to save up to 55% off of your order. And just a tip on your oat flour, which is what I always say to our viewers is not to overgrind your oat flour because with cakes and things like that, if you overgrind it, um, they tend to have an issue getting baked thoroughly on the inside. It kind of stays gummy on the inside. So this kind of helps it to not be gummy on the inside. All right, then we have, let's see, some baking soda and baking powder. And if you want the full recipe, uh, a printable recipe link will be in the details below. Two teaspoons of cinnamon and two teaspoons of ginger. And you can use other spices if you like. These are just the spices that I enjoy, but you could add clove or let's see, maybe a little bit of nutmeg in there. Those are always pretty festive holiday flavors, right? So now I'm just whisking this to get any of those little clumps of the baking soda or baking powder out of there. Just make sure it doesn't have a clump in there you bite into in that cake. Ooh. There we go. Okay, and then I have a half a cup of pecans and a half a cup of walnuts. And we're gonna grate some orange zest in there just to give it a little bit more of that citrusy boost probably about a tea, good teaspoon or so. And if you don't have a zester, you can always just use a, uh, like a, a grater. But I like the zester, it gets a little bit more fine pieces so that you know when you're eating your cake, you don't get a, a big chunk of orange zest because it's kind of overpowering if you get too much of it at one time. All right, so that's about the zest of a whole orange here. Okay. Get all of that out of there. And my oven is preheated to 300 degrees. And yeah, that is a little bit low, but because this has to bake so long, you want to bake it at a lower temperature. Okay, so we're just gonna lightly, lightly mix those things in a little bit. 
get those nuts coated. Because sometimes, you know, if you if you put those in with the flour, uh, they get a little bit coated with the flour and then they don't clump together in the batter anywhere. So you don't get big chunks of it. All right, so now we're gonna do two cups of unsweetened soy milk or whatever plant milk you like. I just always stress that it's unsweetened because most of the plant milks that are out there are sweetened with refined sugars and stuff and we're not using sugar. So we're gonna go with natural sweeteners and that's gonna come from our dried fruit and a little bit of molasses. That's also gonna give you a, a, that Christmassy flavor like, you know, like gingerbread. So we're gonna do, what do I have? Two tablespoons of molasses. And I'm just gonna put it into the milk so that I can stir it before it goes in the mixture to make sure it's well incorporated. There we go. Stir it up a little bit. Oops, and I'm making a mess. That's good enough. Okay, but before I put in that stuff, I'm gonna put in the dried fruit. Oh, it smells so good. And another tip here, I used, I love to have cranberries in here because you kind of need, it's a very sweet cake. If you've ever had Christmas cake or fruit cake, you'll know it's a very sweet cake. So it's nice to have something to, to cut up some of that sweetness, which cranberries are great for. But most cranberries in the store are coated with sugar and oil usually. Um, but there are some out there if you really look for them. Uh, they're fruit juice sweetened or like mine. I just bought a couple bags because they're plentiful at the grocery store right now and I just stuck them in my dehydrator overnight. So then I know that there's no sugar or anything on them. Okay. So now we're gonna put in our milk. Make sure we get that out of the bottom there. And now we're just going to stir that until it's all really well coated. I'm gonna make sure you don't have any oat flour chunks left. And as you stir, oat flour has a lot of starch in it. So the, as you stir, and while it sits here, it will start to thicken a little bit. Oops. Not immediately, it does take a few minutes, but it will. So it, it does look runny, right? But it won't, it will thicken. Okay. All right, so I have, now this is completely up to you. If you wanna use a bunt pan, I like to use some type of bunt pan because, because this is a festive cake, it's, it's all about the pretty, you know, holiday feel of it. So you want it to look really nice. So I have this, just a silicone, silicone bunt pan. I have a different one. This one's pretty elaborate. These are pretty deep creases in here. Uh, but just a standard bunt pan will work. But if you don't like that, you could just put it in a square uh, cake tin too, or round cake tins work too. So I'm gonna pour that in there. And it's gonna fill it almost all the way to the top. And that's why I put this on a baking tray because these silicone ones are a little bit flexible. So with this amount of, of uh, cake batter in there, it would be really, really tippy. And to get that into the oven is quite a challenge unless you have it on a bake tray here. All right, so oven is at 300, and we're gonna stick it in, and I'm gonna set the timer for two hours. All right, let's go. While we're waiting for that, I'd like to share with you some background on our show. The Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show is crowdfunded, which means these free weekly recipe videos, along with our entire catalog of recipes on our website, plantbasedcookingshow.com, and our new Plant-Based Cooking Made Easy Cookbook are all made possible in part by the generous patronage of our supporting members. 
By becoming a supporting member, you gain access to great member perks like monthly product giveaways, free downloads of our eBooks, and access to our in-depth courses, including our 28 Days Plant-Based Made Easy course, where we offer a step-by-step -step guide to making the switch to a fully plant-based diet. We create this show for the hundreds of thousands of viewers just like you who tune in each month from all over the world to make it easy for everyone to live a plant-based lifestyle. So if you love our content, please join us on our mission and become a supporting member today by following the link in the description. Okay, let's get back to the show. All right, guys, come take a look at this. The cake is out and it is absolutely beautiful and it the smell is just, oh, it smells so good. So I did leave it in the oven for probably 15 minutes over. So two, two hours, 15 minutes could take up to two hours and a half. Um, it really depends on, you know, what fruit you use and, and your oven. So you're gonna have to just t keep testing it. And I set it out to cool and I really let it cool for quite a while before I tried to get it out of that pan. Cause as you know, getting a cake successfully out of those bunt pans is sometimes a little bit of a challenge. And this one's pretty elaborate. So oh, it took a while of finagling just to get that out of there without it tearing apart. So be careful. Okay, so that is not it. We have a orange custard, a warm orange custard that we're gonna make to pour over individual slices that just tops this off beautifully because there's a little hint of the orange zest in there. This is gonna be even better. All right, so we're gonna blend it first. So I have uh, three tablespoons of orange juice concentrate. You know those frozen, you can buy it in the frozen food section, they're little tubes of frozen ju orange juice concentrate. And I like to use that rather than orange juice because it's a, a more potent flavor. When you use orange juice, it's a little bit too watery to give you a much of the orange flavor. Then I have a third of a cup of cashews, a third of a cup of dates, half teaspoon of vanilla, and three quarters of a cup of water. And we're gonna blend this in the blender until it's really smooth and I've got my, my burner here heating up because we're going to cook this. That is what's going to thicken the custard. There we go. The dates are thoroughly pulverized. Now we're just gonna get it in the pan. Hopefully it's not too hot, it might be a little hot here. I'm gonna hold it over here just so it doesn't splatter on me. There we go. You're gonna use a whisk and it doesn't take, it just takes a few moments really to get this to thicken. And you don't want it to be a thick custard, you know, like a, like pudding. You want it to be a pourable custard. Okay, my, this looks like it's almost done already. That is amazing. If you wanna come in and take a look to see the consistency. Okay, that's done. Now I'm going to grab a plate and I'll meet you at the table for a taste. Okay guys, it's our favorite time, the tasting time. Oh, it's such a shame I've got to cut into this beautiful cake. It's so pretty just sitting here. Okay, make sure we got the bottom. Mmm, I can smell all the different fruit. Mmm, smells so good. Okay. Ooh, look at that, so juicy. Okay. Now, pour a little bit of this custard sauce on here. Ooh. 
Oh, that tastes so good. Mm. Oh my goodness. Mm. There are so many flavors going on. The crust is nice and, and brown and it's kind of firm. You get a little bit of a crunch from it. But then all the different flavors from the fruit and that warm custard. Oh, so delicious. Mm. And then you get a little crunch from the nuts in there. Mm. A little tart, a little sweet, a little rich from this custard. Mm. I can't wait for you all to try this cake. So delicious. Give us a thumbs up and I'll see you next week for another great recipe.